music producer? You make beats? Would you like to be doing it full time? Well, if so, watch this video where I'm going to give you six steps that put you on the path to making $30,000 to $100,000 a year from your instrumentals, from your beats, from your tracks. All right? I'm not selling any hype. I'm not pushing dreams. I'm not going to be talking about how to get the million dollar production deal. Like those paths are out there, but they're tricky. It's competitive. There's a lot of people going for that. And in a, a lot of ways, it becomes based off of who you know, what relationships you have, and not so much about your skill set or how talented you are. In fact, with music, we're often made to think that we have to either do it really, really big or be totally broke. And we don't realize that there are actually a lot of people who are making nice, livable incomes doing what they want. Livable incomes doing the thing that they love. So if you're interested in this, watch this video or share it with someone that you think needs to hear this. Six steps to put you on the path to making $30,000 to $100,000 a year from your beats, from your tracks, from your instrumentals. Stay tuned. I'm Eric Campbell. I'm a songwriter and producer. I live in Atlanta, Georgia, though I'm originally from Staten Island, New York. I write and produce a lot of songs for television these days. You've heard music of mine on shows like Shameless, Revenge, Chicago Fire, Love and Hip Hop, uh, MTV True Life, uh, shows like that. I also write for artists. I, last year I had songs that were released by Music Soul Child and Bootsy Collins. I've written songs for reality star Sarah Stokes, as well as a number of placements with uh, a lot of independent artists. Um, for the last couple of seasons, I've worked directly on a really big show, a hit show on Oprah's network called Greenleaf. And uh, I work on the show as a songwriter and vocal producer. Uh, had a number of songs that aired throughout season two and had two songs that ended up on the soundtrack. The soundtrack went on to win a number of really prestigious awards. It was Grammy nominated. Uh, it uh, won a stellar award, which is gospel's highest honor and also received a very prestigious NAACP Image Award. So just one of the most amazing projects that I've worked on and just amazed to be a part of it. So all this to say that I've, that music is what I do for a living and I'm, that what I'm sharing with you, I'm sharing from a personal place and from personal experience. I'm also connected to a full network of songwriters and producers who do music full time, who put themselves in positions to make music their main income. So I'm pulling from my personal experience as well as the experience of friends and just the steps that we've taken and I've distilled a lot of what we have done and I'm presenting that to you in this video, these six steps. So these six steps I've divided into two different categories. Uh, the first three steps all deal with ways to make sure that you are competitive, to make sure that uh, if you're going to do this full time, that you are making music that is at the same level, if not better than those who are already making full time income. So I'm going to teach you specifically one, how to evaluate where you stand compared to the marketplace and ways to close the gap if there are one, if there is any. That's in the first three steps. The remaining three steps, I give you specific outlets uh, that you can place your music, specific outlets that pay for music. I'm giving you links, I'm giving you names, I'm giving you companies that I work with directly and companies that I know other people uh, work with. So this isn't a sales video, I'm not collecting your email address, I'm not uh, pitching a newsletter to you or in hopes that promise you that I'll give you more information later. I'm giving you six steps to make money in your music and I'm giving you details now, right? I'm doing this because I, I wanted you to see me as a trusted resource, as an expert in this area and as somebody who is not stingy uh, with information. I had a few people that were generous with information when I started and so in some ways this is me uh, passing that back. Okay, so let's jump into this. The six steps to making income from your instrumentals and beats. 
Step number one of the six steps is get qualified feedback on your instrumentals. Get qualified feedback on your instrumentals. All right, if you've been in this industry for any time or if you've been an aspiring producer for a while, you can relate to this scenario, right? You are at a networking event and you meet an A&R or an executive or someone who says that they're connected to industry people and they can get beats placed. And so you and them seem like you're hitting it off and they give you the contact information and tell you to send them beats and they're all excited and you're excited because you know you just met a connect. And so you rush home, you jump on the email, you take like five of your hottest beats and throw them in the email, you fire it off and then nothing. A day goes by, a week goes by, two weeks, a month. You're hitting them back, you're emailing, you're trying to text them, you get no response. It's like they're ghost. And you don't know if they just didn't like the beats. You don't know if they stole the beats and don't want to say anything to you. You just don't know anything because you're not getting any feedback, right? That scenario has happened to me time and time and time and time again. Without feedback, we cannot become the best versions of ourselves. And that's the hardest thing in this industry is finding qualified feedback. Qualified feedback, right? Unfortunately, the only feedback that's really readily available is casual feedback. Feedback from our parents or from our friends, from our family, from, from our peers, other producers who are around us. And real talk, none of that feedback gets you any closer to making money, right? doesn't matter how much your mom likes your beats. That doesn't mean that somebody else is going to pay for them. Now, opinions are still opinions, right? You know, I have had industry executives reject a beat that I really believed in and they turned it down, said they couldn't find a use for it or they just didn't like it or it wasn't moving them. And I turned around and took that beat to another opportunity and made money off of it. And many of my peers have done that. So. An opinion is still an opinion, but a qualified opinion is worth a whole lot more than a casual op opinion. So where do you find qualified feedback? I'm going to give you a couple of different sources, what I've used, and all of these were life-changing for me because they're life-changing for me because once I got the feedback, I was able to tweak some of my productions. I, I started realizing what part, what things that I did that people liked and things that I did that didn't work. And then I was able to get placements after I got feedback. My placements came after the qualified feedback. First place I went and that I give a big shout out to is an organization called Taxi. Taxi.com. T-A-X-I.com. I'm actually, every link I'm going to mention in here, I'm going to list in the description. So you don't have to write these down. Just go to the description and all of these links I'll put there. You can find them. But Taxi.com, uh, it's a membership. It is a paid membership organization. Uh, other than being a member, I'm not affiliated, so I don't get any income from recommending them. As a member, you get access to publishing opportunities, but you also get feedback from qualified individuals. They, act they actually hire a staff of A&R, many of which either currently work in the industry or formerly worked in the industry. And I have found that they use, tend to hire people who actually understand music, which is sometimes hard to find. And so all the feedback I've gotten from them has always helped. Even stuff sometimes that I didn't agree with, I could always respect it uh, on a music and on an intellectual level. So uh, taxi.com, if you look into their membership, that's a great way to get feedback on your songs uh, or on your beats. Uh, another organization that's worth looking into is called Writing Sessions America. Uh, they're a newer organization, but they've got chapters in a number of different cities. Uh, there's one here in Atlanta. There's a chapter in New York, in the Midwest, uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, I believe, share a chapter. Nashville has a chapter, uh, as well as Los Angeles. So if there's a Writing Sessions America chapter near you, search them out find them online and uh, look into consider joining them because that's also a great venue for getting feedback f from peers as well as access to working producers and executives that are involved uh, in the organization. 
So uh, paid organizations like that are a great outlet. You just have to check different ones uh, to make sure that they actually involve people who are working. Because there are people out there that will take your money. So taxi and riding sessions are two that I recommend. All right, there are other forums uh, where payment isn't involved. Uh, producer forums online are great for getting feedback. Most of the most of them are free, so you can get a free registration. You just have to sign up. And as a general rule with online forums, you get what you give. So these are forums where you have to take the time to rate other people's songs. And then if the community sees that you're contributing to the community, you have a lot of people that will also contribute to you. So if you post up a track, you can get a lot of feedback from other active people uh, in the community. Three forums that I recommend uh, for productions are Gearsluts.com. Uh, Sluts is spelled S-L-U-T-Z with a Z on the end. Gearsluts.com, uh, Futureproducers.com, and KVRAudio.com. Those are all three. I believe the registrations for all of those are free, and you can get lots of feedback. Now, with free stuff and with forums, you have to watch because... There are lots of opinions, and most of these forums have members in the group that do music full-time for a living, but they also have aspiring members and members with very little experience. And so you're going to get opinions from all types, and every opinion isn't a qualified opinion. So it'll be on you to kind of decipher. And the longer you're in the community, the better you'll get at figuring out who really knows what they're talking about and who just likes to talk. So definitely join the communities, get active, get involved, put your music out there. It's great feedback. It's free. It's a good way to, to, to see where you stand. Um, in addition to those forums, there are also Reddit groups and Facebook groups that have great, strong communities. Um, you just have to go to reddit.com, go to facebook.com, and search for your genre that you're interested in. So if you're an EDM producer, type in EDM production or EDM production groups. If you do trap or hip hop or type in trap production, trap beats, hip hop beats, whatever your genre is, pop production, pop producers. If you type that into the search in any of those, you're going to get a whole list of groups that you can join and get tons of feedback right away. So that's step number one. Get credible, qualified feedback. I can't stress how important this first step is. Do this and you will know in a short period of time where you stand. All right? You got to have some thick skin. You got to be mentally prepared for somebody else to say, mm, you're not ready. Don't be in your feelings. I wasn't ready when I got my first feedback, but I learned what it took to get ready. And now I'm doing and making money for my music. Okay, step number two. Learn an instrument, right? That sounds like a big endeavor, and it is, but it's also critical. People who are doing this at a serious level, making full-time income from it, everybody that I know is a musician of some sort. They play the guitar or they play the piano. Many of us play multiple instruments. All right, what we want to do is get to the point where the ideas that are in your head, you're able to reproduce them quickly and efficiently. If you have to sit at the piano and tr try to uh, single finger out a melody that you hear and try to find the right one, it's going to be hard for you to crank out the number of tracks that are required to really make money in this game. This requires us making sometimes 20, 30, 40 tracks a week and being able to do that you know for a year straight and you need to know your chords you need to be able to have an idea in your head or hear something on the radio and be able to sit at a keyboard or pull up a guitar and be able to play it out uh, so you can build your other instruments around it it's important that you can play and if you don't know now you can learn to play the guitar or play the piano one of those two and there's too many resources today that makes this possible you can go on YouTube for guitar and you can type in guitar lessons and an insane amount of video tutorials will come up to take you from zero knowledge to being able to play a number of chords All right we're not talking about making you an expert you don't you don't even have to get to 
a performance level. You need to be able to master six chords, seven chords, some of the main chords, especially if you're doing like pop music and it's only a few chords, but you still need to understand how chords work and be able to navigate through a few of them. Now, if you can do a similar thing with piano, it's a little harder because most piano instructions that you're gonna find out there are built around the classical method of learning. So if you go and search for tutorials, they're gonna to try to focus on sight reading and reading your notes and work on building classical songs. So I know this because I'm a music teacher and uh, I end up teaching a lot of songwriters like myself. And so I actually ended up writing a book that was focused on teaching piano to songwriters. It's the only time I'll plug something of my product in this video course because I think it's really relevant. So I wrote this book, Easy Piano for Songwriters and Producers. So there's no sight reading involved. Uh, there is no classical music involved. You can learn all those things in plenty of other ways. But if you just want to quickly get to chords and chord progressions, I've got a whole methodology here. There'll be a link in the description about this, but you can go to my website, ericmakesmusic.com and forward slash easy piano. This will uh, get you to a book that you can buy on Amazon and that'll get you started. But either way, guitar, piano, learn the basics. Again, you don't have to master them. Learn the basics and learn how to navigate a few chords and understand how chord progressions work. You will take your, your tracks to a whole new level and you'll be that much closer to being competitive to what's out there. So that's step number two. Step number three, study other genres of music and steal from them. Seriously, one of the biggest issues that a lot of producers have is we stay within the genre that we do and we only listen to other music in the genre that we like. And the problem we get is that we start recycling the same sounds. Like, Trap music is a perfect example of this. A lot of trap uses the same 808s, the same claps, the same synths, the same synth rises, the same drops, like you hear the exact same thing. And so if a trap producer can come along and pull in some, say, EDM influences and add some glitches and some wobble basses or do some bass drops like they do in EDM, all of a sudden now you have something that sounds different and unique and sounds like it's next level. So one of the best things you can do is distinguish yourself from everybody else in your genre. And an easy way to do that is pull influences from other places. Like the business world does this. Uh, you hear a lot of people say that one of the best ways to look like a genius is to look and what other industries do and copy that in your industry. And music is no different. Find out what other industries, what other genres are doing and repeat that in your genre. And all of a sudden you're creative, you're a creative genius, you've got new influence, you are uh, amused that people will respect. So how do, how do we do this? We're in the information age, lots of tutorials and information are out there um, from other genres. So let me say first, if you do any genre other than EDM, you need to be studying EDM. The EDM producers are on the cutting edge of everything going on with sound design, music production, uh, sound flipping, beat flipping, sampling, all that that's going on in there. And the techniques that they're using within Ableton and other software is just just next level. So if you are a pop producer or R&B producer, gospel producer, it doesn't matter what you are, start studying EDM just to see what they're doing and, and get these techniques. So how do you do that? First, uh, first step is to create a playlist of songs that you like. And you can do that if you subscribe to a music service like Spotify or Apple Music start researching the songs and just throw them into a playlist so that you can listen to them regularly and study them and start picking them apart. If you don't have a paid service or even the free membership of those services, which you can sign up for, uh, go to YouTube and start creating a playlist of songs there. All right, once you have the playlist, start identifying these, the artists that you like and you can do a search on YouTube 
say uh, you you like a lot of Drake songs, or you're trying to figure out how Drake's productions happen, then in YouTube you can type in how to make Drake beats, and a ton of videos are going to come up where producers are recreating uh, Drake songs or the beats behind Drake songs. And you can watch them. They're doing it in Logic. They might be doing it in Ableton. They might do it in Pro Tools or, or some other sequencer. So, so type in that search term in YouTube and then start watching the most highest rated videos. You can also go to Google and type in top music production tutorials. And a number of blogs will come up where they've rated different tutorials or places. Uh, there are actually academies and online schools that teach production techniques across multiple genres. Some of them uh, are for a fee. Some of them are free. It's worth checking them all out because there's a lot of good information out there. You can go into YouTube and search for EDM tutorials, beat tutorials, Anything like that with tutorial in it will bring up a, a number of videos. And just make it a habit. Watch one, two, or three every day, and then go and try to add that technique into your genre. Do it by genre. Do R&B beat making tutorials. Do gospel music tutorials. Do country music production tutorials. Start searching for things outside of your genre, and your mind is going to expand significantly and you're going to see a great change in your own production style right away if your beats are at a seven this one tip alone will move you up to a nine guaranteed so that's step three okay so now we're ready to jump into the opportunity side of these steps step number four this is important it's kind of prep but it's opportunity also get full songs or at least choruses written to your instrumentals. You do tracks, but get songs or at least choruses written to them. Let me tell you why. There are a lot of opportunities that are only open to you if you have a song written to your track, or at the very least, if you have a chorus written to your track. Now, for artists, if you're shopping your tracks to artists, I've seen over and over and over again, some artists and executives, it's hard for them to hear what to do with a track if they don't have some sense of direction. They might not even go with the song that you write. They just need to hear the way the melody works and the way that you envision. And, and when you created that instrumental, you had a vision for it, but they might not see it the whole way. And so uh, sometimes people will reject an instrument, instrumental just because they can't see the full vision over it. But if you give them a chorus, if you give them a full song, that takes them the whole way to their vision. Again, even if they don't use your idea, at least they see where it's going and then they're able to kind of add to that. Now, if you are pitching to other types of opportunities like uh, TV publishers or, or film producers, there are certain uh, music publishers that only take full songs and they won't take instrumentals. But once they get the full songs, they will try to shop the song as well as the instrumental. So I've had instrumentals placed on a number of shows, but they were actually for songs that I wrote. Uh, sometimes the full song got placed, sometimes the vocals weren't used, they just used the instrumental as a background in the show. So you open yourself up to more opportunities when there is a song attached to your track. So it, it takes a lot of work and you don't necessarily have to do this with every song in your catalog, but if you have a hundred songs, a hundred tracks in your catalog, then you should put, make songs out of a third of them and put hooks on another 20 or thir on another 20 or 30 of them so that you have some variety. Um, that leads to the next question of how do you get writers or collaborators on your tracks? Mm -hmm. For that, I'm going to take you back to the forums that we were talking about earlier. Each of those forums where you were getting critiques on your music, 
a lot of those forums are great places to find collaborators, but I'm going to point out two that I'm used that I've used and are familiar with that have specific collaboration areas. Taxi.com, and again, I'm a member, and it's a paid membership site. But Taxi's forums are free. You can register for a free account, and you can network with the musicians and the songwriters in the forums. And there's a collaboration corner that uh, th where you can post tracks and you can listen to other writers and writers and producers find each other. I've found great collaborators and have gotten placements on a few shows with collaborators that I found on Taxi's website, Taxi.com's forum website. So the link for that will be uh, in the description. Another good site is songwriter101.com. Uh, songwriter101.com has a forum and it's actually a site that's created by BMI, the Performing Rights Organization. Uh, there is also a collaboration section in there. It's a great place for posting your tracks, listening to writers. You guys can find each other and hopefully you can get people who like your tracks and will write. And most writers have their own recording set up so they can uh, write wherever they live and use Dropbox or another service to send you the session or send you their vocals or even do a full submix and just send you back the final mp3. One note about this, and I know I'm giving you a lot of information, I'm, this video is probably going to be pretty long, but I'd rather you have the information, more information than less, and you can scroll through the video, you can rewind, you can save it, you can come back, you can take notes, there's everything you need I'm intending to pack in here so that you can get started making money with your music. But one other note when in terms of collaboration that's really important. If you collaborate with someone, if they write a hook over your track, if they write a song over your track, they are now part owners of that creation. And if that song gets placed, even if the instrumental only gets used they're going to share uh, a certain percentage of that song. So the way my collaborators and I work, if, if someone sends me a beat and I write a song to that beat and we send it to a publisher and the publisher places that in a, a song, we split whatever it is 50-50 if there's two of us. If there's three of us, we split it in thirds. But if there's two of us, we split it 50-50 doesn't matter whether they just use the acapella. doesn't matter if they just use 10 seconds of the song. If they just use the instrumental, they didn't use any of my vocals. They didn't use anything that I wrote. They only use the instrumental that the producer sent. We both still split it 50-50. The reason why is we couldn't have got the opportunity without collaborating together. And you never know which way that song is going to be used. That one song can be used in 50 different TV shows. Ten of the shows might just use the instrumental. The other ten might use a full song. The other ten might just use the instrumental with some background vocals, but not the lead. So because you don't know how it's used, but you still get more opportunities by collaborating, we agree up front to share everything and split everything no matter what. So as a producer, you're going to take that hit, but you got to think of the pros and cons. You're going to get opportunities that you wouldn't get if you didn't do the collaboration. So again, you may not want to, uh, you don't need to get right lyrics written on all of your tracks. You can have some that are just instrumental so that if a publisher hits you up and says, hey, I like that song that you sent, do you have any more instrumentals? You can send instrumentals with no lyrics on it and, and whatever sync fees or publishing comes from that is 100% yours but you need a portion of your catalog to have some songs or choruses written to it. That's step number four. Step number five, reformat your beats for TV and film usage. This is huge. There is so much demand for music on television across all genres, hip hop, pop, EDM, alternative rock, folk, Americana, like it's all out there and they use lots of it. The next time you watch your favorite show, start paying attention to the music you hear in the background. We call these cues 
when there's music playing behind a scene or in transition from one scene to the next. And all of that music has to be paid for and the music supervisors on the show are constantly looking for new sources of music. Just as an example, take Love and Hip Hop, which I think last season had like 18 episodes. Each episode, now they, it's an urban show, it, it uses primarily hip hop tracks. But if you listen to it, they might use up to 40 different instrumentals on every single episode. They might only use 10 seconds of one, 30 seconds of another. Watch the next time you look at it or another reality show and you'll notice every single scene, every cutaway, every transition has a track playing in the background. That's money. Somebody got paid for that. That somebody could be you. Now the way payments work on these type of shows, there you can get paid in one of two ways. There can be sync fees, which are upfront payments, meaning when they decide that they want this track, they will pay a fee. It could be $500, it could be $5,000. It depends on the show, depends on the budget that the show has, and also how many they, they want. But if, they pay, if they're paying upfront, they're paying it in the form of this synchronization fee, or sync fee for short. And then there's also back-end fees or royalty fees, which are what your performing rights organization, if you're in the U.S., that'll be BMI, CSAC, or ASCAP, uh, they will collect a payment every time your song is performed. Meaning every time the show airs, and that's on television, that's on Netflix, that's on internet streaming, in any capacity. Every time that show is seen by an audience, a payment is, is collected. So some shows only do back-end payments, some shows do front-end and back-end payment. It really just depends. The, the show, sometimes the shows that don't do front end payments uh, re air the episodes so many times, like a lot of reality shows, that the back end payments make up for the lack of a front end payment. So that's just something to be aware, aware of, and it helps you determine what opportunities to go after. Now, when I described this step, I said that you have to reformat your track, and this is important. Most times as producers, we're used to creating songs for artists, and that's the only way we think about songs. We think about songs in a song format. So we think about the verse, we think about the pre-chorus, we think about the chorus, might throw a bridge in there, and so we always structure our arrangements for songs. When you're thinking for TV, for cues, they don't think in songs. They need uh, tracks that are normally a minute to two minutes long. Usually if I'm making a track for TV, I always shoot for kind of two minutes. And they need something that builds and transitions and gives them lots of options for sections. So a lot of times uh, the supervisors or the song editors, they'll take your track and they'll chop it up and they'll just look for uh, maybe a, a breakdown part if they need something subtle that just has uh, the drum beat and the bass together, or they might need the real high energy part, so they'll go to the biggest part of the song, of, of the track, that what might normally go in, say, the chorus if there was a song to it. What we tend to do is change the track every four or eight bars, and this gives them lots of opportunities to play. So we'll drop in new drums, drop out new synths, add new energy, bring in a low energy breakdown, a lot of the things that you would do in a full song format, but now this is happening kind of every four to eight bars. Just gives them a lot of variety and a lot of things to play with uh, within this whole two minute long track so that the music supervisor can have lots of ideas. If you want to hear more about structuring your tracks in film format or in cue format as we call it, leave me a comment or send me a message uh, and maybe I'll do a, pro a separate tutorial uh, just around how to format your instrumentals for TV and film. But really important, every four bars, every eight bars gives them something different.
So now you're aware of TV and film as a significant income opportunity and you know that you need to reformat your instrumentals so that they fit in the TV format. I want you to start doing some homework. I want you to start watching shows, but now pay a lot of attention to the music on the show. This is the one opportunity where watching TV is now your homework. But pay attention to the music. Pay attention to what genres they're using. And this can be, it doesn't matter what you like to watch. If you like to watch sports, listen to the music that's happening in the transitions and in the introduction. Like a lot of real big sounding alternative rock, high energy screaming guitars. You hear that in, in a, a lot of sports themes. So whatever you watch, start paying attention and take notes. Again, you can go on YouTube and you can create playlists of this so you can make study a regular part of your routine. Okay, so your next step is then to start making these cues, start converting your tracks. After a while, you're going to have a nice collection of instrumentals that are formatted and ready to be submitted to publishers and opportunities. So who do you submit these to? Who is out here paying for these cues and how do you find them? This takes some research and some trial and error. There are lots of different kinds of companies. There are music libraries and boutique agencies that shop to music supervisors and some of them advertise, some of them you need to know someone in the agency to get in contact with them. Here are my recommendations for companies that you should submit to. These are companies I work with directly or people that I know have vouched for. First company I'm going to recommend is Taxi, taxi.com. Again, I'm going to put all of these links in the description so you can find them there. Taxi is great. Little controversial company and people have different opinions on it because there are some people that feel that you shouldn't pay to submit uh, your music and Taxi is a membership site. Let me just say, again, I'm not affiliated with them other than being a member. I don't get any affiliation fees. If you register and you tell them that you found out about it from me, they will give me a small discount on my next membership, but they do that for all, all members. So this is just my own personal recommendation. I would not be doing music full time if I weren't a taxi member. They've introduced me to every music library that I work with, every publisher that I work with, every dollar I spent on membership, I've made back and made more. So when I vouch for it, I vouch for it 100%. It's a paid membership organization they charge about $299 for the first year, and I think it's $199 for every year after that. But for that, you get invited to an amazing music conference every year that's totally free, and you get the opportunity to submit your music to tons and tons of real vetted opportunities. And what we talked about earlier about having critical feedback, you get, a, you get really good qualified feedback. So if there's something you need to change, real professional ears are listening to it and giving that to you. So that's my number one recommendation, taxi.com. Another good company that I like is songtrader.com. There's no E in trader, so it's S-O-N-G-T-R-A-D-R.com. This is not a membership site. There's no membership to join. It's free to have an account and free to make submissions. Uh, they take a commission off of placements that they make, and they also do have a paid level, which I think is about $8 a month. Uh, and if you do the paid level, then the commission that they take will be smaller uh, than if you were on the free level. But there is a free level. You can go, you can log on, you can register, you can look at the opportunities. You're not going to get feedback. You'll either get a placement or you won't. Almost every other opportunity that I'm going to list is like that. You submit, and if you don't hear anything, that means you didn't get it. But songtrader.com is a great site. It's free, and they have really good vetted opportunities. Another site that I like is called tracksandfields.com. They're free to join. They don't take any commission off of the sync fee if you get it, and they have lots of cool opportunities that... You can go on the site, you register, you browse, and if you feel like you have the music for one of the listings, you submit directly to the film company or TV show. 
great site to join. Again, you're not getting any feedback, so if you don't make it, you won't know why, but lots of opportunities on this site. So I just gave you sites, websites that you can join uh, and register where you'll find opportunities. My next recommendations are fall in the category of what are called music libraries. A music library is a company that pretty much collects tons and tons of music. They organize it, they, they take the responsibility for sorting it, and then they shop that music to various film production companies, uh, film producers, TV music supervisors, and they get a lot of work because music supervisors know that they have lots and lots to choose from. It's like going to CarMax to find a car. You know you're gonna find something that you like. Music libraries are great. If they like what you offer, uh, you submit your music, you help them categorize it, and then they begin including it in the submissions that they make to their clients. Uh, there are lots of different kinds of music libraries. Some work better than others. A lot of us spend a lot of time doing some trial and error, trying to find the good ones. Here are two that I really, really like, especially for instrumentals. One is called JinglePunks.com. Jingle, as in commercial jingle. JinglePunks.com, they're a big company. They take in lots and lots of music. They get a place in lots of places, and it's a library where you don't necessarily need a recommendation to get into, which is not always the case. You can go directly to the website, you can sign up for an account, and you can submit, I think, up to three songs initially. If they like those three that you submit, they'll then sign you up as a producer, they'll allow you to submit the rest of your catalog or as many as, as you want, and then they'll begin actively shopping it. Now, as a library, they are the publisher of your song. So, with most libraries, there's a 50-50 split. In a lot of cases, you retain all of the writer's share of your publishing, and they uh, get the publisher's share of the publishing. So this is all referring to the back-end money that I mentioned earlier. You in the library are splitting this 50-50. Take note, this is different than the websites where you're pitching directly to opportunities and you're not sharing royalties. Music libraries are more like your agents. So you're sharing the back-end royalties, you're sharing any sync fees, you're all, they're doing business for you and you're splitting the costs, you're splitting the profits 50-50. There's no cost to join, um, but that's how they make their money on the back-end, but again, the pros and cons is you're getting access to lots and lots, lots more opportunities. So that's what you weigh. Another library that I like a lot is Indigi Music. I-N-D-I-G-I dot com. Indigi Music, it's a small boutique firm run by one person who has a ton of drive, a ton of hustle. I respect her immensely and she's gotten me a lot of placements and a lot of my friends, lots of placements on different reality shows. Uh, gets a lot of placements on different films, TV. She works really hard, but she's very critical in what she accepts. But she does take uh, submissions over through her website. So check out Indigi.com, submit, follow the requirements very specifically, because if you don't follow the requirements, then your submission will be ignored. But check it out, Indigi.com, great company. Another company that I like is filmmusic.net. Filmmusic.net. Right, this is not a music library. This is a website where you can get access to uh, listings for music supervisors and films that are looking for music. Now, this one uh, doesn't have a membership or there's no fee to register, but there's a fee to submit for each opportunity. And that fee changes based on um, whether you're signed up to the free account, whether you have a monthly payment, whether you have an annual payment with the site. So based on the level that you're signed up with the site, your submission fee is different. But they have great opportunities, definitely one worth check checking out, filmmusic.net. So those are companies that I like working with, my friends like working with, great ones. and. I can't even stress that all of us 
already in the industry have done tons and tons of trial and error. So for every company that I've recommended, we've all tried four, five, or six, or have music of our own sitting in libraries that we no longer recommend or don't work with. So this video is saving you a ton of steps and hopefully a ton of heartbreak by giving you companies that have been vetted by industry professionals. Now, there are other companies that I may not have mentioned or that I haven't personally worked with, but that still do good work. You still have to do some of your own research. This is just a groundwork for getting you started. There's a good site that I like to recommend called musiclibraryreport.com. Requires a membership, but you get access to tons of reviews. It's like a Yelp for music libraries. You find reviews, you can find, who, find out who people like to work with, who they don't like to work with, Great, great feedback on this site. So go to musiclibraryreport.com, get a membership, and continue your own research. You might find out about new companies that, have, that I haven't heard of or haven't worked with, and you might find some great partners to deal with. Okay, that was a lot in this step number four, but it's the biggest step. And so oh, take some time to really digest all of this, getting your music placed in film and TV opportunities. This is the biggest step. Uh, everyone that I personally know who is doing music full time, a significant portion of the income comes from film and TV placements more than anything else. So definitely invest in this. At the same time, don't just jump to step number four and I'll tell you why. Step numbers one, two, and three are the steps you need to get ready. You need that credible feedback Otherwise, you start submitting to opportunities too soon. Some publishers won't give you a second chance to resubmit. Sometimes you just get one chance to make that really good impression. So you want to know that the tracks that you have are competing with what's out there. You want to know that your music skills are up to par. You play piano, you play guitar, you know your chord theory, and you've studied from other genres and made your music the best that it can be. You've done all those things, spend a lot of time on step number four and get your music in the right hands and get it making money for you. And that brings us to the sixth and final step, which is learn digital marketing. Learn digital marketing. It's really important that every creative comes to grip with something. In this day and age right now, no one is going to put you on. We're past that point where people put people on. In fact, if anything, the only people who get put on are people who have already put themselves on, right? People who've already built up a following and get engaged, all of a sudden, the big, the big companies come chasing them. But just being a talented person working in your basement or singing at church or singing out on the street and get this, getting discovered, doesn't really happen in, anymore but it's okay because we are at places now where we have the technology to build our own audience we have a technology to raise up our own sign and let people find us digital marketing is how we get discovered now it's how you found me it's how this video showed up on your timeline so whatever you do whatever product you're making learn how to use Facebook Instagram, Google, learn how to use these mechanisms to find your audience, to find your customers, to find clients, to find artists that want to work with you. If you don't know how to do this, we're in the information age. There's tons of knowledge out here ready to teach you. I'm going to give you two recommendations for learning about digital marketing. And both of them focus heavily on Facebook because it's just the strongest channel right now for building an audience and getting your name out there. The first is a book. It's called The Complete Guide to Facebook Advertising. It's on Amazon. I'll put the link in the description. Now books get outdated really easily and Facebook changes so quickly. So there will definitely be things in the book that no longer apply, but it will still give you lots of good foundation. Uh, make sure you order the whatever the most recent edition of the, the book is. 
And also check out the author's blog because I believe he keeps that updated with a lot of the recent changes. Now to stay even more up to date is a podcast that I like to listen to. And podcasts are great because they do stay up on whatever Facebook changes are, whatever Google's changes are. Uh, so my favorite podcast is called Perpetual Marketing. It's available on iTunes and it's also available on the company's website, which is digitalmarketer.com. Digitalmarketer.com, and if you forward slash podcast, you'll find uh, this blog. It's a great blog put together by some digital marketers, a digital marketing company. They have tons of clients, and they're really knowledgeable about Facebook advertising and just digital advertising in general. So, Get the book, check out the podcast, start educating yourself on digital marketing, and then you can just practice. The cool thing about this is you could take an, a post that you make. The next time you're in the studio and you're just throwing up the iPhone or throwing up your camera and getting studio footage, you can boost that post for a dollar a day to new audiences. Just something to experiment with. Look at digital marketing. You don't have to be an expert on it. Just get a little bit of knowledge and start experimenting and you'll find out on your own what's working or, or not working. You might add five new fans a week or come across one or two new people who might be interested in getting your buying a track or needing to lease a track or buying a track exclusively or it might need your engineering or mixing services. People won't find you if you don't put your name out there. So start studying digital marketing, make yourself knowledgeable about it, and then start pushing your brand across all of these channels. Pay for traffic. It's okay to pay for traffic. Every business in America pays to advertise. And now what you do, you're a business. And you have a channel where you can advertise for as little as a dollar a day and find new customers. Start wrapping your mind around that concept and you're going to see lots of growth in your career. New clients, new opportunities, new money, all from putting your name and your brand out there. So there you have it. Those are the six steps to put you on the path to making 30K to 100K a year from your music productions. Step number one, get credible feedback. Step number two, learn an instrument. Step number three, study other genres and steal from them. Step number four, get songs or choruses written to your tracks. Step number five, reformat your instrumentals as song and TV cues. And step number six, study digital marketing. Some of this might seem heavy or it might seem a lot, but I did say in the beginning that I'm not pushing dreams here. I'm not telling you how to get overnight success these steps all take investment of time and energy, but they pay off. In the taxi community, we all talk about um, a five-year plan. We all, as a group, we focus on five years to move from music being a side hustle to music being our full-time income. And that's helped a lot of us put things in a perspective, have a goal to strive for, and it's worked for so many people. Think of it this way. If it takes you a year to get your music really right, to, to learn your core theory and to get the right feedback and to study the other genres and really to get a collection of tracks that are shoppable, and then it takes you a another year to just flood these publishers and supervisors with enough opportunity to start getting placements and having those placements turn into back-end royalty, then three to four years, you can start getting a, a steady stream of income. It took me about two years, maybe three, before I started seeing regular income each quarter on my BMI statements. And then every year, it's just a matter of increasing what you did to the point where your job income is replaced by, by music income. So we're not talking about overnight success, but this is doable 
If you can replace your income in a few years and in a few years be doing only what you love, why are you waiting to start? We can start that today. I want you to go for this. If this is what you want to do, put the time in. All the steps are right here. If you have any questions, leave a comment, send me a message. I will definitely respond. I'm here to help as much as I can. I want to see you go for this. I want us all to go for this. I want us to be doing what we love, making money, making music. All right, Godspeed. I'm Eric Campbell. Let me see you when we get there.